Hi, it's Nick from the Run Testers, and this is our review of the Adidas Adizero Adios Pro 2. So, let's start with the price of the shoe, which is £180 in the UK. It's $220 or €220. Euros. It is a shoe with a big old stack that takes it right up to that kind of world athletics limit of 40mm. I have it listed uh, from Adidas as 39.5 at the heel and 31 at the forefoot for an 8.5mm drop. But I have seen some different numbers elsewhere, but it's around there, kind of an 8, 8.5mm drop. So, for the weight, Adidas lists it in the UK 8.5 at 225 grams which is 7.86 ounces. Uh, this is a UK 10 and I weighed it at 245.46 grams, which is 8.6 ounces. Uh, the upper is a Selamesh 2.0. Uh, we were a big fan of this upper on the original um, Adios Pro. It's obviously been updated slightly and yeah, it creates a really nice lightweight airy feel while giving you a really good lockdown around the shoe. Midsole, obviously a lot going on, so we'll start at the top. At the top, you've got a little carbon plate under the heel here to give you a little bit of extra stability. Then there's a layer of Light Strike Pro foam. Then there are the energy rods, Adidas's kind of carbon-infused rods that go along uh, the forefoot there to kind of simulate the metatarsals in your foot. Then there's another layer of Light Strike Pro foam, but this one's a bit more sculpted. There's kind of a little cutout kind of here, and then there's a big cutout on the bottom here, which obviously shows you off the energy rods. This is designed to kind of uh, reduce the weight of the shoe, basically by chucking a big lump of foam out that you might not need. And then there's also a fairly more, there's a more pronounced bevel at the heel kind of on the two compared to the one. And in general, it's got a wider heel base uh, noticed on the shoe. You've got that wider heel base. Uh, the outsole is quite similar to the one. There's some, there are some differences. Like you've got a little bit kind of more going on in terms of little holes in that to create more grip. And then at the front, this is continental rubber right at the kind of toe off bits where you want the best grip, you know, the most reliable grip. They put the best rubber there, but it's not over the rest of the outsole. This is kind of this very thin, kind of tacky rubber that was used on the Adios Pro one. It's obviously very light to have this very thin outsole. Grip actually hasn't been a massive problem on either shoe. I will say that as long as you're sticking to the road, do not go anywhere near the trails in this shoe. Right, I've got Kieran here with me now to discuss the shoe. We're going to start with a quick chat about the fit, uh, which is a bit weird for me, but Kieran, you go first. Yeah, I mean, I do feel like with this shoe, I ran in an eight and a half, which is my size. I do feel like you have to work quite hard to get your foot into a position that's kind of comfortable for the run. Part of that is just, I think, the way the lace is locked down. Part of that as well is still about this kind of flat tongue that they've got, which is, which to me, it's, it wraps a bit more than the first one, but still comes up quite narrow. You've got to work a bit hard to get the kind of foothold right on this shoe before you go and run. No problems kind of toe box wise in terms of length and width. I found that kind of fine. It is a sort of compact fit for me. I would definitely go true to size, but you do have to work, I think, to get your foot into the right place. Nice. Yeah, so I've actually got a UK size 10, which is a size up on my normal size, just because I couldn't get hold of the shoe without going for something a bit long. Um, it's actually been completely fine, to be honest. Like it is roomy in the toe box. I have more room there than I need, but I was still able to get a nice tight fit around the heel and midfoot. Um, actually, it's a struggle to get the shoe on at times because it is quite narrow and locks down really well, but there was a fair bit of room in the toe box, I think, even if I was in my true to size, which I, you know, obviously I've got a size up, I've run on it, it's been okay, but I'd still recommend going true to size. On to the run test. Uh, it's been a, a fairly weird one, this one. You've had the shoe for a fair while and I've done some, you know, a load of distance in it. I've had a bit shorter, I've done some kind of short racing in it, but we've got a kind of, I guess, a range of experiences in the shoe. Yeah, so I've, I've had it for a while. Some of that has been a bit intermittent because I've been doing sort of ultra tests. So I haven't necessarily been able to go out and run kind of consistently in it kind of at race paces. But I've done a couple of marathons, some on my own, some in kind of race conditions. And yeah, had a bit of a mixed mixed bag with it. Fair enough. Yeah, so I found in terms, compared to the first year, when I first put this on, I immediately felt this felt a bit more kind of tipping forward and racy. My opinion on that has changed a bit over time. But what I really feel like I've noticed is at kind of cruisy speeds and working up to kind of, you know, steady and tempo and like marathon pace for me, really, uh, I've really liked it. I feel like there's a really nice transition on the shoe, probably better than the first one. I feel like um, the just general ride was a bit smoother, a bit more natural and kind of comfortable and great for kind of holding those paces at kind of longer paces. I haven't had quite so much joy with it at kind of shorter, fast stuff. But yeah, how have you found the ride of it? Yeah, I mean, I think it's absolutely, it's very noticeable comparison to the first one so I've even been out and run with both of these shoes on my foot the Adios Pro on one foot and the Pro 2 on the other and actually I can I completely agree there is a different feeling underfoot the platform of the Pro 1 I think is far more kind of stable I think there's a lot more kind of 
punch in this second shoe for me. I think it actually gets you sort of moving. It's, it's, I, I think the word I would describe is this one's a little bit less dull than the first one. Although the first one I thought was a good kind of marathon shoe, this one definitely has a little bit more to it, I think, when it's when you're underfoot, when you're moving at high pace. So I think in terms of stability, I sort of the pro had a bit more in its locker than, than, for me than this. I think once you put this on, I think you actually also, not only the tipping, but I noticed the outward roll to the lateral side to be a little bit more present in this. And I think that kind of cutaway in the middle, I'm aware of it underfoot compared to the Pro 1. That said, I've run uh, in this and done a full marathon at kind of a middling pace for me. So one of the seven in seven, where I ran seven marathons in seven days. And if you work, if you're concentrated on your form and you're landing your feet right, I think I agree. I think you get a lot from this shoe in terms of that kind of smooth transition. I think there's a lot given back in terms of overall kind of boosting of performance. And I felt it to be, a, you know, an interesting competitor to the Vaporfly 2. So what I found with it, with that, the cutaway was, um, I kind of did one run when I started quite a slow pace with the mate. I was just, we were just jogging along. We were going to build the pace, a decent pace by the end. But early on, I did kind of a couple of little rolls of the ankle because I wasn't paying attention. And it was like holes in the road. It wasn't just on flat road. But I felt like I had to pay a bit more attention. Just, I think maybe that cutout at slow paces is a bit risky. And I've had some ankle problems recently, which have not be, really been related to any particular shoe, but probably have had a few on that haven't helped. And as I was coming back from those ankle problems, I only really had this shoe with me on holiday and I had to keep using it. I found that I was just doing like kind of 20 minutes, 30 minutes building up again. I was going, I'm actually going to run at a good pace here because the shoe feels much more stable to me as soon as I hit kind of, um, yes, kind of steady towards race paces. If I just jog along in it, I am a bit worried about rolling. <laughs> um, so that was something I definitely felt with the shoe that the, the midfoot cut out and the ride really works much better at pace as opposed to some super shoes where I do find they're quite good at easy paces as well. I think one one thing I've noticed when you when you plant both feet in, in terms of the two shoes, it just feels like you've got an in, almost an entire kind of platform of this uh, of this foam underneath on the on the Pro One, and you can feel that kind of there's something not quite there on the Pro Two, and I think that makes a difference. Nick, do you do you feel like there's more in terms of that foam kind of squish and response in the Pro Two? That's something that I kind of was sort of slightly aware of, and again going back to that idea where the first one just felt a little bit more sort of dulled. And actually, this one compared to the Vaporfly 2 seems to have a bit more. Uh, I, I think there is a little bit more. And I think they've, they've made the heel wider. And as a heel strike, I think I'm getting a bit more from the shoe, certainly transitioning through from the heel. I think I'm getting a bit more squish in response. And um, But what I noticed, actually, I think the shoe does work really well for me as a result of that on longer kind of, you know, steady to far, marathon paced efforts. But when I, I took the Adios Pro 1 and 2 to the track and did a kind of, a, I split between them, I did like a mile and some 400 meter reps in this shoe, then switched to the old one. Actually, I found that the old one felt a little bit kind of more nimbler and responsive when, so on like kind of 400 meter reps, even as a committed heel striker like myself, I probably land a little bit more mid foot forward, and I felt like it had a little bit more maybe potentially at those faster paces than this shoe, which I think to me works much better at the slightly slower paces. I sit back a little bit more at kind of half a marathon pace and kind of it gets a little bit more of a rolling um, response action going, um, which I don't know if it's similar to the Bayfly for me. It's, it, it does, you know, I think there's the benefits there are probably, you know, on the similar lines, but it doesn't feel so squish in response to me. It does feel a little bit firmer, a little bit more kind of smooth, and it's still got a lot of pop at the front, but I wouldn't, I don't think it's as squishy as the Vapor or even maybe the Asics for me. See, I, I, it's interesting because I've, yeah, I've also been out and had one Vaporfly on one foot and one Adios Pro on the other foot. I've done, I've mixed these up. And the Vaporfly 2, to me, felt a little less kind of, I, I guess, squish and responsive. You know, the Vaporfly obviously has masses of that, but this one just felt a little bit more kind of raised and, you know, so you get, a, I think I get a little bit more kind of sink and, and, and push off with this Adios Pro 2. The one thing, though, that I actually prefer with the Vaporfly 2, and we're, you know, we're going to have another video on that in the channel soon, is that I just felt there's a little bit more ground contact actually overall with the Vaporfly 2 than I got from this because I feel like there's a little bit of a sort of higher stack of that foam. That said, I think, you know, if you take, if you just gave me this shoe, took it out of context of those other shoes, put it on and said, Kieran, would you like to go and race a marathon in this shoe? The answer is absolutely yes. I mean, I, I do feel like it gives you an awful lot. And I think for that one, you know, controlled effort where you're running well and you're concentrating on having the optimum form, you're landing your feet right, you know, you're really, really dialed in. I think this shoe has an awful lot to say about it. I ran one of the, one of the seven and seven on very tired legs using this shoe. And by the end of that marathon, I think it was sort of day four, if I'm remembering rightly, 
the, 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 you know, I felt far less fatigued than I had in some of the earlier shoes I ran in. And I realized that this was sort of giving me a lot. Although I had to be very careful about kind of that, you know, what I call sort of being on the edges where it sort of has a, a tendency to that stability might kind of work on some of those sort of tendons and, and ligaments and bits that are, that are happening. But I think if you're for race day, I think it's still a really, really good option for racing a marathon. And it's, it runs close to me to the Vaporfly 2. Yeah, so I think yeah, so to me, I'd, if I was looking at racing, I'd lean towards the long races. I'm going to actually use the shoe. Uh, I've got a couple of races this weekend. I'm going to use both this and the Adios Pro 1 to do a kind of a little comparison there. But I have raced a park run in it. You don't really race park runs, but it was, um, it was about two weeks after my marathon. And that was quite interesting to me because obviously I was running on tired legs, tired body. Everything was a bit of a mess. And I was more or less running solo on a cold morning around a park. And I could feel like early on, I think, ah, shoes feel pretty quick, nothing special. But the last couple of K, I did feel like you're getting those kind of protective benefits you get from carbon shoes getting a little bit back at the end you know i held a, a k pace at the end there and felt like i could finish quite strong which almost probably was more akin to the feeling at the end of like a half or a full marathon given that i was so wrecked even over 5k but um yeah i like it i like it. it's a good marathon shoe i think i don't know i'd be reaching it i don't think it's as versatile necessarily as the vaporfly but um it certainly you know produces the goods in terms of super shoe performance and another another thing we kind of we obviously spoke to to Dustin, you know, the author of the study on carbon shoes. And, you know, one of the things that he mentioned about this is the idea that, you know, if you, why would you swap a shoe that makes you run efficiently and well in training out for kind of racing and go between them? But actually, I think with this shoe, I don't think it's a shoe that I would actually do much training in. I might go and do a few of my kind of longer, faster efforts, maybe in sort of that marathon training program. But this isn't a shoe that I would put, sort of be putting on sort of day in, day out to go and sort of run those runs. I just don't think it's got the overall stability for me. No, yeah, I think it's just got a slight element of risk to it, which is it's a nice, dangerous shoe for your race days. So it comes to the verdicts on the shoe. One thing we haven't really talked about yet, and I think it's really important with the shoe, is that it is cheaper, considerably cheaper than a lot of the super shoes it's going up against. It's 180 pounds. You know, the Vape Fly is 225 now, Outflies 260, Mesa Sky is 225. They're all kind of over 200 pounds. And I think I would say you are getting a pretty similar level of performance from the shoe. I personally would still be using the, maybe the Vaporfly, the Outfly, and even the Asics as probably, I think, slightly faster, better shoes for me. But I think you're very close to the shoe and it's a lot cheaper. Yeah, I mean, I think this is a really good option. One hundred eighty pounds, actually. Yeah, for for what's that? Like Forty five pounds cheaper. I think it's got a lot going for it, and for that kind of marathon race day where you know you're going to be running well, I think it's a toss up for me. It's a close. It's a definitely a close run thing between this and the Vaporfly two. I personally would go Vaporfly two over this just because I like. There's a bit more kind of ground contact. I think there's a bit more overall kind of stable platform, and I might kind of look for that to be a little bit more of a reliable shoe overall for the way that I run and my preferences. But I think there's a lot to say about this shoe. It's nice and light. It's got a compact kind of feel on the foot, a little bit more compact, I think, than the Vaporfly. I think the overall sort of packaging, this kind of heel with the sort of slight bit of padding and cushioning up there, again, offers a little bit more than the, than the Vaporfly. Um, I, there's a bit I would go back and like, if you, could, if you could swap the uppers of the Adios Pro 1 back onto the shoe, I would do that. I think they're much better and I think they're much more kind of comfortable overall. I would quite like to see what would happen maybe if this cutout wasn't in there as well. You know, whether or not that's the thing that's actually made this a bit more punchy. But just to bring back a little bit more of that solid platform. But overall, yeah, I think if you're looking for a cheaper marathon race shoe that you're going to go chasing PBs in, this is a very, very good option indeed. I'd, actually, I'd say on that part, I'd pick up and say marathon race shoe in particular, because the only other shoe I think that really troubles this when it comes to really good value is the puma dv8 nitro elite now it's never available so this might all be null and void but if you can find that shoe it's 170 pounds and i would say if i was going to race a 5k 10k probably even a half marathon i think the puma has a little bit more punch to it than the shoe for me um i find this a little bit more cruisy i really liked doing a lot of miles in the dv8 elite and there are lots of people who might like it for a marathon as well i think that's not quite enough shoe for me to go to a marathon in i think i prefer the kind of slightly more exaggerated height and kind of foam you're getting on this shoe but yeah, the DV8 Elite is a nice shoe, I think, um, that's really good value for a carbon racer. How distorted is the market that £170 is good value? But um, <laughs> I think that's the one that maybe could kind of rival the Adidas for the kind of title of best value kind of carbon racing shoe out there.
That's it, guys. That is our review of the Adidas Adios Pro 2. Let us know what you think in the comments. Is this a shoe that you'll be using over, over favorites like you know the Nike Vaporfly, uh, all those kind of shoes? Uh, please like, subscribe, ring the little bell, and we'll see you next time.